first of all, thank you all for coming, and I'm really glad that I'm seeing you in this number. So today I'm going to present you um, uh, a presentation regarding art, regarding the artist's process flows, regarding what the artists are doing and how and what we can learn from them and most of all, how we can benefit from them. So first of all, uh, in order to, to, to have a clear expectation regarding this presentation, we're going to set the notion of what an artist is. So first of all, artist is anyone who has the creative power over creating an art piece, reg uh, regarding creating a work of art, a piece of art. So uh, that's the sole reason and meaning behind that the movies are art, be behind that AAA games are art. So in that case, uh, the art director of the movie it's an artist, but the rigors that stitch the textures on the, t on the 3D generated things probably aren't. So uh, regarding our uh, creative power, uh, if we compare ourselves as, as a software developers with, uh, with an artist who paints on canvas, I mean, we have a lot more canvases than he does. Uh, first, we have the Facebook canvas, if somebody used the Facebook platform for drawing anything on it. But we also have tablets, we have browsers, we have a lot more creative power at our, at our grasp, and therefore we have a lot more space in which we can learn from them. So first of all, I'm going to start with, the, I'm going to start with ex uh, giving an example of a thing by thing which artists are doing, and I'm going to make an analogy after that on, uh, on what is the most similar thing to that in software design and whether that's beneficial or not. So the first thing I'm going to show to you is the mood board. Mood boards are actually pictures like this and the artists are creating them prior to working on any project. Uh, so uh, they are, it's actually a collage of uh, a, a lot of other images that actually, within the composition of all those, they are actually uh, towards one direction. And uh, most meaningful of it, they always have the panel from which they actually color pick everything. And why is this important? Because every single piece is different. If you put this piece and this piece together, they don't end up, but together with everything else, they make a whole. And uh, how do artists actually utilize this? They're printing it on a board within the office. They're setting it as a background on their pieces. So whenever they need to color pick, they are just Windows M, color pick, continue to work. Uh, what's the analogy of this? Well, uh, this is only rough guidelines hang up on the wall that, that are actually giving us the general feel towards the end product and the general feel towards the end uh, implementation. So in software development, we can, should print the general guidelines within our offices. So whether we are using uh, three-layer architectures, CQRSs, or anything. So actually a substitute for the color pickers are it can actually be uh, the process in which we are doing the things. Whether we are using TDD, so whether we have written unit tests and everything. So every part of it can be reusable. Uh, Another thing is the Art Bible. Art Bible is a concept that's actually derived long, long ago, and uh, the most, most influential one uh, of them is the concept art of Mobius for Jodorowsky's Dune. So uh, afterwards, I can go on forever for that one, but in order to keep it shor short, uh, this is how, uh, this is the cover of Jodorowsky's Dune art, and this is, one art of it. And this was done prior to the movie The Dune, prior to the first Star Wars. And look at it. Uh, actually, that art Bible was very big and it was used f in order to get uh, funds for the movie. And the movie was way too ambitious, it never got made. And actually, Sony last year did a trailer for it, naming it the most important sci-fi movie that was never made. So. Uh, what actually came out of it was the art bibles for Star Wars and everything else, which actually uh, helps everyone involved in the process of creating an art piece to know the general direction of it, even without, even without knowing 
the details within it. In order, when, the, when you pack the whole thing up, to be single, meaningful thing. So, um, it's a definition. It's, uh, by definition, it does not define the product. It's a vision of the product. And uh, closest to it, what we have in software development is the vision document. So please raise hands, any one of you who have used or seen a vision document. Well, exactly as I expected, five, five in total. And that's very bad, because the vision document, we can refer to it whenever we need to in order to know how to make uh, feature-proof concepts. Uh, because we generally, as software developments, we tend to make feature-proof software whenever we have a change request to be able to change. But if we are able, if we know what, what is the upcoming change? It's a lot less, I, I, it's a lot easier. And actually here, when this was written and drawn, uh, Darth Vader was not supposed to be a force sensitive Kentucky Fried Chicken. He was supposed to be uh, someone that is in power and, th and that power sh should have been shown through his whole ideal. So uh, the, main, uh, the main reason why we don't have an vision document for our, for, for our products is because mainly we are working with investors and in the invest in investors constantly are living the fallacy that the prototype is half the product. And that idea also needs to change because we always should ditch the prototype completely and start from scratch. So with these two things in mind, if we always have the vision document in our, I at our hands, it will be a lot easier for us. Another thing which is a lot less abstract and more abstract at the same time is the idea generator. Idea generator uh, by, by idea, by a concept is you have several buckets of things connected with, with each other. You just put, put them in separate brackets, in separate basks, then draw one from each and try to connect a thing. So actually it should look like slot machine. So if we have, for instance, on one side, blockchain chat system, blockchain bank system, AR command interface, whichever of the combinations, sometimes very good idea might emerge upon which you can iterate. So it helps generating ideas if you are in lack of ideas for a, for a project. Or if you just want to prototype, try, try some new technology or whatever, you can just chain off bounce of ideas like this. And, th and this is used a lot in, for instance, uh, generating ideas for uh, episodes of those um, series that tend to last like forever and of something like Friends or whatever. Um, another thing which is in connection uh, more to the movies and the and novels also, it's Journey. Journey, it's a book published by Joseph Campbell in 1990 and Journey uh, actually describes the whole path a hero should take in order to have a uh, fulfilling and meaningful and meaningful notion through the throughout the whole story for us as users that are trying to enjoy that story. And uh, Star Wars, uh, Matrix, uh, Harry Potter, Spider-Man, Lion King, every single blockbuster you know actually fills in within, th within this category. So, uh, there is always crossing the first threshold, having the, uh, the uh, having the mentor, the ordeal, reward, getting back at it. Uh, we always see the story over and over and over and again, and uh, it happened to us a lot of times. It's a cliche, okay? It's a cliche, but even though we know of it, we still enjoy it, and that's what that is very important thing. Uh, especially when designing uh, user experience. Uh, because part of the UX designer's work is not only how a single page feels, but how the whole flow and the whole experience of the system is. And that's why, for instance, if we have any open, uh, any open sign up system, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, crossing the first threshold is this first line over here. So everything we have before it is the call to action, refusal of the call and everything. The act, the, the act two, it's actually getting you used to the system. It's, uh, for instance, in LinkedIn, when you have to fill in everything you know, 
uh, everything about you and by doing so, uh, LinkedIn generally populates things which already knows about you in, in order to get you started up and running as fast as possible. The return home is actually you already using that system. So the whole UX design actually should and can be verified by things that in other arts has been used for more than two decades now. And we should utilize that. Another a an great example of that utilization is a game named Journey, because there it's a complete ripoff. It's one-to-one -one relation to the book. And actually, in this game, you, you, you're the protagonist. It doesn't have text. It doesn't have anything. All you can see is a shredded mountain with a beacon of hope. You have that refusal. You're like, OK, I know that the game wants me to go there, but I'm not going to go there. And eventually, you do. So everything follows that path, and still, it's one of the best reviewed games. Another very good example, it's Deck of Lenses. Deck of Lenses, since we've gone into, into the gaming world, it's, uh, actually I have it here, it's a deck of best practices written on a single, pa on a single paper when designing a game. So for instance, here we have something which is called Lens of, triang of Triangulity. It This is the, st the structure of the card. You have the card, you have something in it. This is called Lens of Love. Here is the category of it. Here is how to use it. And here are the main aspects of it. So for instance, the Lens of Triangulity, it says uh, it the main focus of it is that uh, every player likes to have the ability to choose between playing safe for a lower reward and playing with high risks for high rewards. Lens of love is, for instance, that everyone should love the things he does. How this adds up in our s ecosystem, in the software development world? Well, we have a lot of good books. Well, game design have a lot less than us. We have a lot of good books. So if we read through Head for Design Patterns, we can make a card out of each and every one of them. And after that, whether it be it on our refinement meetings or whether it be it you know, on our um, sprint re uh, retrospectives, we can just pull off some of those, agree on how much, how much of them. We can define how we use them. It will help us. It helped the game designers a lot. It's the best reviewed book ever. We should have at least one other product that uses the, the same concept. Other examples that we can use up is 12 factored up, the architecture of open source projects, even books like Peopleware. How many of you have read Peopleware? It's a very good book. I heartwarmly recommend it to each and, each and any one of you. There is one quote in it which says, software quality comes for free, but only if you're willing to pay highly for it. It takes a little bit to understand it. But the thing is that I see a lot of benefit of it written on a card or even put it on a wall. Uh, another thing, for instance, the architecture of open source projects. It's a book in which the authors themselves of open source projects cared to write down how, how and why did they design the things they did. And actually, there is only one follow-up of this book. So we have two totals, two books in total of that series. And the thing that artists are doing the most for getting inspiration, it's seeing other people's art. So apart from that we can do it, uh, the deck of lenses, we should uh, get from other people's work. We should work with our colleagues. We should uh, get with colleagues from different teams, try to communicate on the differences, try to communicate wh what, did, what decisions did they do and why, because that's the best way of learning. It's a, it's a lot expen more expensive to learn from your own mistakes. So we, we can have GitHub for it. And again, I'd recommend the architecture of open source projects, the book. So the key takeaway here from me isn't just write something, put it on a wall, try to get whatever, but to seed the idea that we shouldn't only look at software developers when we are trying to learn from someone, that we could also look at other places because we have a lot more common with the artists than with other engineers because it's a lot more 
keen, at least to me, to have it on a wallpaper, our general guidelines of how do we work, rather than to have a full, full blue wallpaper. So learn from others, seek good working practices wherever they are, not only in software engineering. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for your attention. Do you have any questions? We have a question there. What are you more most passionate about, game design or software development? <laughs> Good one. Uh, actually, uh, I'm most passionate about software design in game development. <laughs> That's the right answer. 